Rockstar Minute is rated R. The Rocky Horror Picture Show is also rated R. We're going to spend this time discussing the movie in gory detail, and along the road we will talk about some adult content and use some of our favorite swear words. Scumbers, blood, fanny, jobber now. Consider yourselves warned. Welcome to Rocky Horror Minute. We are now in minute six of the Rocky Horror Picture Show. And I am your host, Kelly Hansen. And I am your co-host, Leandra Lynn. All right. And so today we're discussing minute six, wherein we actually see some of the characters for the first time after the conclusion of Science Fiction Double Feature. So at the beginning of the minute, we're panning down the church and we see a happy newlywed couple emerging along with all of their wedding guests and some strange usher type folks and a priest. They pose for a photo at the urging of a small photographer And then the mysterious priest goes inside, and then Brad Majors pulls the groom aside, and then they have a little discussion punctuated by random punches. It's bros being bros. Yeah, it really is. It's a a very strange uh, interaction, but basically Ralph says, I guess we really did it, and then Brad says, I don't think there's any doubt about that. You and Betty have been almost inseparable since you met in Dr. Scott's, and that's the end of the minute. So next minute, we'll find out where they met. I'm going with boudoir. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. So that... it's There's a lot happening here. (laughs) Andrew, what's your impression of this minute? Oh, for sure. And just thinking, uh, thinking about how much we we're able to get with just some lips and some credits. I'm actually really excited to be able to interact with real people on the screen. Yeah. Buckle up. This is going to be a two hour episode. Yep. (laughs) You can pause and get a snack now if you want. Yeah. Okay. We're back. So I guess first, uh, first thing is I, this is just such a weird wedding party. Who acts like this at a wedding? That, Starting with the uh, the cameramen, they're already waiting outside. They're smoking a cigarette. Everybody comes out at the same time. They take one picture and then, spoiler alert, they essentially leave right after that. <laughs> and there are bridesmaids, but I don't see any groomsmen. I'm guessing, just given the fact that this is literally everybody that exits the the, the church, that this was like a very fast wedding, maybe a shotgun wedding. Oh, yeah. Perhaps Betty is preggers. Yeah. I mean, callbacks teach us later that, you know, she's got the clap and everything else. So who knows? But I mean, you know, I, Brad could have been and Janet could have been. I mean, J- was Janet in the bridal party? Janet wasn't in the bridal party. Yeah. I think. I think that they're uh, that considering the fact that they aren't one of the close friends or family um, in the picture, That's they're probably right. just like wedding guests that were invited because they they were around when when Betty and Ralph met each other. That's right. my guess. I can't say for sure. And yeah, the movie does not tell us who these people are or what their relationship is, except that the cameraman says parents and the grandparents all the close family before he takes the photo so you can assume that the people in the photo are all relatives of betty and ralph now fans of this movie uh which i assume is our entire audience will know that all of these kind of zany characters um those actors are going to show up later in the movie playing completely different zany characters not all of them though well not all of them i I, well the really especially zany ones i guess i should say the photographer a bunch of the the weirder people in the group and of course um i mean the ushers and the priest are played by tim curry richard o'brien and patricia quinn who of course are going to be frankenfurter riffraff and magenta later in the movie what it's not a spoiler because we already saw that in the credits. Oh, I just forgot. Yeah. So 
I was doing a little bit of research and I was trying to figure out where the Denton Episcopal Church was. And I found out some very interesting info. Denton, Denton, you've got no. Uh, so. <laughs> oh, it's, wrong show. Uh, Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> That's for shock treatment minute. Oh, God. <laughs> Yeah, so the Denton, the Denton Episcopal Church does not exist. It's on a back lot. Oh. But it is built in a very similar kind of design to other Episcopal churches. If you live any place in the, in the Bible Belt, uh, you might even see some of the smaller, older churches uh, just kind of in the rural areas that have very much this look. I've always wanted to to go over to one of them and take some pictures, but that is weird and bad and wrong. Mm -hmm. So I've never done that. Why would I do it? But I want to. Um, but you have had sex in them, correct? I mean, not in them. Okay. Near them. Um, in the cemeteries. Yeah. Thinking about them. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> but, uh, so wait, this, so you're saying this church was a set. It is not a physical church somewhere. Exactly. Or, okay. That's interesting. I would have thought they would have just filmed at a church. There's so many. Yeah. I literally know one that they could use right now in my hometown. It's been empty for years. Um, my dad used to meet his Sunday school class in there. Aww. Uh, but anyway, and it looks exactly like this. So, yeah, that's news to me. So, I also like some of the smaller details, uh, just given the fact that this is ostensibly on a back lot, they really put a lot of thought into some of the, uh, some of the little things that they threw in there. Like if you look at the church sign, the eye is missing from the church sign for the Wednesday night service. And I just love that. And yeah. I, I love just the lack of reverence that the cameramen have for uh, for the church. They're smoking a cigarette and they burn the uh, they put out their cigarette right on the uh, right on the sign right before they take the picture. <laughs> yeah. And I just it's things like that that I think make this very rich. And just knowing that Sue Blaine hated these costumes, I really took a look at them and. I don't blame her for some of them. Some of them are just amazing. I was going to say, can we talk about what Ralph is wearing to his wedding? Well, I, I just want to throw out the fact that he's wearing bright white shoes yeah. and an off-white jacket and a white shirt. And I think that's a maroon or burgundy vest. I love everything about it. It's just awful. I mean, like... He literally looks like he's in, like, a high school production and just got whatever clothes they had backstage real quick. But if you put on your tinfoil hat and have the same conspiracy as me that this is a shotgun wedding, does that make sense? No, it does. It does. Yeah. So, like, I'm here for it. Um, if you look at Betty's dress, it's kind of a pretty formal, sleek, 1970s, maybe late 1960s style dress. I, I really can't believe that Su no, Sue Blaine didn't love this. Yeah. And then let's talk about the elephant in the room. Rick Am I shot. The <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, that would be, uh, that'd be Fran full and wider. Oh, um, I know she'd be okay with that joke. Uh, but, but seriously, she is, she is going to show up later in the movie and she's absolutely fantastic. I know she's Leandra's favorite Transylvanian. Absolutely. Uh, mine happens to be Peggy Ledger, but I love them all. Peggy Ledger's the older one who's going to get kind of a spotlight moment in an upcoming minute here. But anyway, Fran Fullenwider is standing next to Betty. I don't know if she's supposed to be her mother or mother-in-law or whatever, but she's wearing like a crazy leopard print hat and then like a wedding dress, I would say. Like an old person's wedding dress and jacket. Uh, it's I, she really said, fuck the bride. I'm the bride. <laughs> I love it. I, I love everything about Fran Follenweider. And I can only hope that she isn't actually involved in the wedding party at all. She is. She's wearing a boutonniere along with everybody else. Um, but just, oh, to be that bitch that shows up wearing all white, keeps sunglasses on the entire time and just wanders around going, bitch, I'm, I'm iconic. Yeah, no, that is going to be my hungover ass at my daughter's wedding, though. Oh, I'm just surprised that you didn't do that at my wedding. I would have been so happy. 
Yeah, I tried. So before we get much further into this, I just want to throw out a couple of uncredited credits uh, for people in the in this scene. So these are bridesmaids and wedding guests and the fathers of the bride and groom. So there's Gina Barry, Gina Barry, Megan Hanks, Mark Johnson, Petra Leah. Frank Lester is, we're assuming, Betty's wedding father. John Markwand is who we're thinking is supposed to be Ralph's father. And then there's Koo Stark, who's one of the bridesmaids. And this is, uh, I think this is really interesting. Koo Stark is also well known for another thing that isn't a movie. Oh. She had a relationship with Prince Andrew. Oh, I thought you were going to say a production of Hair. But <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, but that's fucking insane as well. Yeah, she and would be alive if uh speaking of conspiracy theories. If you if you're looking for her, she's the bridesmaid in the light lavender right behind the wedding couple in the picture and she just she's living her best life. She's gorgeous. It almost makes because that's also, by the way, what Peggy Ledger's wearing was that old bitch a bridesmaid. <laughs> no, she's the grandmother. Is she? I think. Okay. I think she could be. Yeah, I'd love Peggy Ledger to be my grandmother. No, I would too. Yeah. Um, I also just wanted to mention it, it took. I was a fan of this movie for a very long time before I, I found out that Betty Hapshad is played by. The woman who is now named Hillary Farr of Love It or List It fame. At the time, it was Hillary LeBeau. LeBeau. Yeah. Um, I mean, she's, let's be honest, Hillary, uh, you've had some work done. So she doesn't look exactly the same. Um, and she's doing like a weird voice. The only, we haven't heard her speak yet, but she's like, hey, okay. She's doing like a friend Drescher. Like, okay, you guys, this is it. But, um, Still, it completely blew my mind because we've all seen Love It or List It. So she's like the bitchy British one who's always trying to get people to keep their houses. Um, and yeah, it's it, that's her. I guess she went on to have a career in reality renovation shows. I mean, she arguably is one of the most successful people to come <laughs> out of this film. <laughs> yeah, I mean, she's getting more work than peter hinwood ever got after the movie <laughs> but um yeah so the the people who are in the wedding party that are uh, are transylvanians later on are gay brown she's uh, when when you hear the call back get your mistress in the picture uh, she's the one that runs in and kind of scoots herself behind ralph and then there's Anthony Milner, Hugh Cecil, Fran Fullenweider, and of course Peggy Ledger. There are two people in this, well, I guess three people in this that I can't find any information on, and they're the kids. So you've got the little kid in, uh, the little boy in the uh, black suit with the bright red bow tie. You've got the girl with the pigtails, and then my favorite girl ever, ever little girl with the pigtails and the blue dress throwing rice directly into the face of other people. <laughs> yeah, including Ralph. Oh, it's great. He's, you see him like squinting and trying to deflect the rice going directly into his eyeballs. Yeah, she's I really hope that she went on to great things, but I can't find any info on her. If you're listening to this and you know everything about this person, please let me know. I sort of care about the other two kids, but really I care about the the little girl throwing rice in people's face. Yeah, we're going to have like a Princess Anastasia style search for her. Grandmama, it's me, little girl in blue dress from Rocky Horror Picture Show. <laughs> exactly uh if you're looking at the picture that uh, that was taken of the wedding guests if you squint a little and look in the back you see a triffid yes yeah and a triffid as we'll remember from previous moments is a basically any large weird plant um in british slang 
Yeah, so I can only assume that that was put in intentionally, just given the attention to detail that the rest of the film has. Yeah, I mean, like, because as you said, this is a set, everything is a deliberate choice, which really changes the way one should interpret these scenes. Like, the be just and fear not sign off to the side, which I love, that was like something they did on purpose which um, it looks like something uh, that danny elfman would love yeah but we'll we'll talk about that more a little bit later yeah indeed i guess the question that i have for you is how old were you or where were you when you realized that tim curry patricia quinn and richard o'brien were in this scene so all right you know me very well so you know that my attention to detail is not great i'm really like oblivious to my surroundings and things that i'm not focused on so riffraff and magenta i realized pretty early on were in it or that it was the same actors like not the first time the first few times i watched the movie but i i figured that out pretty quickly i don't think i noticed tim curry I don't think I even saw or looked at the priest until I started performing in Rocky. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that I'm kind of in the same boat as you. I mean, it was just so long ago, but yeah, <laughs> it, yeah, just give well, me. <laughs> <laughs> given the fact that in the next scene, you see a picture Uh, it's either the next scene or the one after that with the criminologist you see him looking at a picture and he circled riff and magenta in here i still didn't get it until i saw this live and they had people in the in the shadow cast performing as the as these people well and also i mean let's be real richard o'brien is a distinctive looking man a very and, attractive man yeah yeah um absolute heartthrob hollywood hard body but he so to me like i think i recognized them specifically just because he has a sort of distinctive face and it, he looks similar to the way he looks as riffraff patricia quinn and frank both wear a lot of makeup as magenta and frank so i don't think i I don't think I put two and two together because of that for a while with Frank. I can definitely appreciate that. Um, Oh, you know what? Just realize something. Mm -hmm. Is the implication that Frankenfurter was the priest for the wedding and did he perform the wedding? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love that. I love everything about that. Well, so and... I didn't realize it it was it was not until even much later that I realized that the actors who played the Transylvanians are then in the wedding party. So for the longest time, my assumption was that Riff, Magenta, Frank, and we're going to see Columbia in a couple minutes here were actually there for whatever reason, like staking out brad and janet or something for their nefarious purposes now that i know that the now i think it was just double casting once i realized that the transylvanian actors were also in the wedding party i decided that it was probably just double casting but for a long time i my assumption from that was that they were the same characters as well and if you look at some of the i'd hate to call them conspiracy theories theories but conspiracy theories um from like i wouldn't say early uh early internet but like live journal era uh you get a bunch of people going like ah no they're they're all getting recon and (laughs) this is all part of their fantastic plan and uh, honestly i live for stuff like that i i really hope that there was some larger reason for it yeah i mean if it weren't for the fact that we're told basically that the Transylvanian actors are Betty and Ralph's family, that is the long con if they were pretending to be their family members for the whole time. But I will say, like, I mean, I assume I haven't, again, seen the stage show. I assume that they're p- played by the same actors. So maybe it was just an homage to the stage musical. So in the... In the Rocky Horror Show, 
Transylvanians aren't really a thing. They're called phantoms. Okay. And there, uh, there isn't this kind of extended scene with Ralph and Betty uh, post wedding. So yeah. none of uh, none of this happens. Oh, wow! But I should really see this musical. I feel like I'm unqualified right now to be even doing this podcast. But uh, but yeah, that that makes more sense then. So did you did you recognize what? riff and magenta were kind of going for with their with their look in this scene oh yeah that would be another classic art reference american gothic so that's by grant wood did you know that that isn't a picture that is of a husband and wife it's actually of a brother and a sister (laughs) no i didn't know that um that's amazing and Honestly, the the level of attention to detail with their costumes, I think, is amazing, especially when you see that. And we'll talk about this a little bit later on, of course. But one of the things that I love about American Gothic as a uh, as a piece of art is the repetition of different shapes. And you have that repetition of shapes in in their clothing, in the painting and Richard O'Brien's pitchfork is three-pronged, and if you look at his overalls, they have a similar kind of almost a motif of three solid lines. And if you look at what Patricia Quinn is wearing, that smock is incredibly detailed, and you can almost use the painting to figure out what her costuming should look like. It is beautiful work. And but course, that is that's an amazing detail with the brother sister thing. Um, we will see in the future that that is an important theme for Richard O'Brien. Oh, absolutely, and yeah, we'll talk about that in subsequent minutes. Yeah, there's a lot to unpack. We don't have time. <laughs> we have all the time. Yeah. Hey, this is Leandra from the future. I done fucked up. I said that the people in American Gothic were brother and sister. They are, in fact, father and daughter. Sorry about that. I'm going to go back to the future. Hopefully dabbling with the past doesn't have any repercussions. I I just want to throw out that Sue Blaine, who I've already said is so great, absolutely amazing, clearly didn't make any mistakes in this movie at all. She puts Brad in... A and a cummerbund and bow tie, and they're both red plaid, but they're different plaids. I can yeah. only assume that she could look into the future and that she knew that people were going to be cosplaying at the very least as <laughs> Brad, and she hates that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a choice. Everybody's wedding attire here. I mean, even, like, I, of course, understand the American Gothic thing, but the fact that they're also kind of dressed as ushers seems to imply that they were, like, working the wedding in overalls and... Oh, I never got that they were uh, supposed to be ushers. I thought that they were just people who uh, who did maintenance work at the church. Maybe, uh, uh-huh. maybe Patricia Win- Quinn's character is supposed to, like, keep things tidy and and... Of course, Richard O'Brien could be, like, the maintenance guy. So they're just locking up after. I guess that makes sense, yeah. I never thought of it that way. Makes a lot more sense than my theory, though. But they could also be ushers. They they can be whatever they want to be. I don't know. Have you gone to a wedding before where some random person just starts hitting the the groom? (laughs) I mean, I'm going to say no. Not to my knowledge. Like, who does that? I love uh, I love that this entire scene is built on this concept of a wedding, but nobody in this has ever gone to a wedding. Yeah. Well, to be fair, he started it. It is true. Ralph is perhaps just weird. <laughs> Every, I mean, everything about his interaction with Brad is just crazy to me. I just, I can't wait to figure out what sort of thing Dr. Scott had 
that got uh, got <laughs> Ralph and Betty put together. I'm going to pretend that I have no idea. Yeah. Yeah, that'll be exciting. That's for minute seven, though. We just got to wait. So before we wrap this up, do you have any callbacks that you particularly like in this minute? Yeah, so the the big one that's fun for me in this minute is the asshole fight, which we were kind of just talking about the punching right before Ralph starts hitting Brad. You yell like asshole fight round one. And then there's an asshole fight round two, I believe. Um, Right. And then there's. Um, a final round where you uh, like finish him or whatever and i love that version of the callback i've also heard um punch the guy who gave you syphilis hit him back asshole fight yeah. i do love that too yeah that is good that i do there's a lot of fun callbacks implying that brad and ralph were romantically entangled and some of them are very funny what <laughs> yeah i had no idea yeah. I also uh, love um, when when you hear congratulations, uh, yeah. you as an audience member can call back and say ejaculations. I don't know. It's just, it's, course, yeah. it's some fun stuff. Yeah. And then um, I often hear something along the lines of like, who's invited to the orgy or whatever, right before he says parents and the grandparents. Yes. Yeah, yeah, all, all the close family. family. Keep yeah. it in the family. Yeah, exactly. And then you take the picture and it's your souls. We have your souls. <laughs> because the photog- uh, the photographer team, photography team rather, just they're completely bonkers. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know. They're great. Agreed. So, yeah, but those are the main ones I have for that minute. All right. So I think that we've talked this one to death. This might even be one of our longer minutes. Yeah, so far. I guess let's wrap this up the same way that we wrap up any uh, any of our minutes. Now, you don't, you don't have, have to, to go, go home, home, but you can't, can't stay here. So, so get, get the fuck out. out. Oh, even better every time. dabbling with the past doesn't have any repercussions.